and I can't think of uh, any priority more significant than people who don't have a roof over the head, don't have a place to stay, or sleeping in the woods, or sleeping on the street, sleeping behind 7-Eleven. Um, I've just always found it a very compelling issue. There are close to 900 residents here in Montgomery County who experience homelessness on a daily basis. But leaders here are committed to providing a safe, stable, and affordable place for all of these residents to call home. That's the whole purpose of what we're doing tonight is to find these people. This is the one night a year where we have so many people to help us do outreach. On a cold January night, year, volunteer year, troops year, assembled at the Civic Building in Silver there. Spring, packing supply bags. They're the like NASA blankets that get really uh, hot the thermal technology and receiving detailed instructions. So what we're doing tonight is we're counting the unsheltered people. So people that are sleeping rough. All the folks that are staying in shelter right now will also be counted, but that's not our job. Our job is to focus on the people that are sleeping outside. Before heading out to count how many residents are sleeping rough across Montgomery County. Where are you going? Uh, Langley Park. Langley Park. Yeah. The effort was part of the point in time count. This Point in time is something that happens not just in this region, but all across the country. That provides a snapshot of the county's homeless population. So we'll just do all of Fenton Street on foot, right? That's, yeah. yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Councilmember George Leventhal, a longtime proponent of ending homelessness yeah. here, participates in the count each year. One night it was 17 degrees, and we encountered an encampment, and there was this guy living in a tent and the tent was encased in cellophane wrap to keep out the cold. Well, this is a national mandate. In order to get funding from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, every community has to try on the third week in January to count the number of homeless people in the community. Uh, we're at Fenton and Wayne in downtown Silver Spring. We're about to check out all around the library to see if there's any homeless folks. And when you do that, you really get an understanding of how difficult the life is, especially when it's cold. If we see someone that is uh, at risk or is a danger to themselves or others, then we have county services, our mobile crisis team, that we would call. If it's a medical emergency, then we would call 911 and have an ambulance come out and assess. No, I don't think there's anybody underneath. Okay. It's still pretty early. It'll be like 1 o'clock by the time you know that if someone's out on the street, they don't have any other place to go. But I don't think there's anybody underneath. Yeah. But now it's just, it's not even midnight yet, so people could be out on the street for any number of reasons and, you know, be, have, a, have a place to go home to. Yeah. Volunteers of all ages were on hand to assist with the gathering of data, including a group of students from the Uniformed Services University of Health Sciences. Uniformed Services University is a special group of people because we're all active duty military, so we believe that service is important both to our active duty military population, but also to just citizens in general. I definitely thought it was a great opportunity to um, take advantage of, to help out in the community and to make sure that the people that are um, living outside do have adequate clothing and things of that nature. So I'm here to help in whatever way that I can to um, make that effort possible. It warms my heart to be able to help, uh, especially since I know that the homeless veteran population out there is pretty significant. So it's something I want to do. It's a cold night to be sleeping in a stairwell if you got somewhere else to go. Councilmember Leventhal and his team checked in with businesses. Have any homeless people come through? Uh, we're, so we're, we're counting the number of homeless people. Yeah. Help them get services and housing. Looked in garages and parked cars. Checking at the, the cars that um, have a lot of stuff in the back. Do you have a flashlight? Yeah. You know, because a lot of um, homeless folks, they might be living out of their okay. car, so they might be carrying everything that they have yeah. um, in the back with them. Yeah. For no. anyone who might need assistance. One was in Silver Spring and one was in Bethesda, and they were both sleeping in their cars. And these are the people who most need uh, the help of government. And so I've always felt uh, compelled to do what I can on a priority basis. And I can't think of uh, any priority more significant than people who don't have a roof over the head, don't have a place to stay, or sleeping in the woods, or sleeping on the street, sleeping behind 7-Eleven. Um, I've just always found it a very compelling issue. Um, I, I don't want to talk too much about it. I, I, the, the individual information is private. Um, he was 
uh, in a stairwell sleeping, so um, it, it does not appear that he has another place to stay tonight, but um, he says he does. Good Have a good night. Stay warm. Okay. All right. Okay. Thanks for the tip. All right. See you. Bye. What'd they say? So, uh, it's not on our map right now, but John said that uh, he spotted a few people um, in a parking garage close to the, the library on Lane Avenue. Mm -hmm. So, we'll, we'll, we'll check it out on our way back. There were those on the streets who did not want any help from the volunteers. All right, can I ask you a question, brother? Okay, do you, go away. Okay, can I just you're ask you a quick question? Me, you're the man. You are working for the county? That's what I'm doing. There's uh, so many homelesses. Yeah. Uh, listen to me. So many homelesses going to the Silver Spring. That's who we're looking for. Go ahead, there. Okay. You're a good man. Do you have your own place to stay? Hey, do not ask me again. Okay. Go away. All right. God bless you. Thank you. And others who provided the information necessary for the county to update its statistics. Um, any mental health uh, diagnoses or conditions? Not that I know. Okay. Um, any problem with alcohol or drugs? No. Okay. Just kind of the difference between what he was saying and like the situation. Like, yes, he lives with his parents, I guess, sometimes, and that he didn't initially said he didn't have a place to stay tonight. Um, but then, you know, he's all bundled up. He's got a backpack and he's out at, you know, one in the morning. So you're kind of wondering what he's kind of letting on about and what he's not. You know, maybe he has a place to stay. Maybe he's just a little bit, you know, embarrassed about the situation. But, you know, I believe what he says and he was willing to take what we give him and it's more information. Information. So uh, he's willing to also get any more information about additional housing and services. All right, good luck to you. Stay warm. He's 19 years old. Yeah. Art student and lifeguard. Says he lives with his parents, but it's almost 1 o'clock in the morning and he's walking around with a great big backpack full of stuff. And it's cold. Yeah. Have you ever experienced domestic violence? No. No. Some of those who are chronically homeless can be out on the street for up to one year or more. Sometimes other issues come along with homelessness, like mental illness and addiction, which can make housing these folks difficult. What was the city or the state that you last had a permanent address in? Maryland. The latest effort was also part of the Inside Not Outside program to end chronic homelessness here in Montgomery County. Would you like some gloves as well? And we are on track to end chronic homelessness by March 31st of this year. So in a couple months, uh, we, should be, we should be able to end chronic homelessness. And the next initiatives are focused on families and youth. And we, our target date for that is 2020. So we're already kind of making those steps of gathering the data, having a better understanding of what are the needs of our families and our youth, and so we can determine what kind of interventions we need to um, use. It's, it's not a simple problem to solve. Uh, the, our county's been very committed to it. We've put a lot of resources into it, and we've achieved a lot of success And by studying what other communities are doing. We're trying to keep track of people who don't have a place to stay tonight. Are you headed home? and um, working with national organizations that promote best practices um, and primarily the housing first philosophy that uh, you, you're not putting a lot of requirements that impede getting the client into permanent housing. You're not telling the client you can have housing if you stop drinking or if you get your act together or if you find a job or if you become religious or any of the kinds of requirements that might have been put in place that in the past might prevent a client from actually getting housed. Last year's numbers for the point in time count were down by 9%. And though official numbers have not been released yet, Amanda Harris says this year's numbers are down as well. Well, we identify a person for that unit. So At a recent council committee session, she attributed the resources the county provides to address homelessness as critical. Uh, we have also expanded our housing initiative program, and I want to just take a moment to thank you uh, for approving the changes to the regulations that's allowed us to have more flexibility and better alignment with Housing First. Uh, I think it's been particularly important that we were able to separate the housing from the services so that we can better leverage our resources. So if we have people that are assigned to the housing initiative program and they come up for a housing choice voucher, 
them were able to continue to provide the needed support services, but they can maintain that housing choice vouchers. It's going to take ongoing collaboration. Casey Barker is a program director with Interfaith Works. Over the past seven years, she has been involved with homeless services for county residents and says the Montgomery County Council is fully invested in finding a safe, stable home for every resident. I've seen um, continued support from the local government here in Montgomery County, which is, I think, what makes us unique and stand out from other jurisdictions. Um, although Montgomery County is an extremely affluent neighborhood, um, a lot of people are shocked to see that so many people are struggling with poverty and homelessness. And so the cost of living is a really big concern um, for the working poor and for people experiencing homelessness. So having extended support from our local government um, and expansion of housing programs and housing subsi subsidies through the Housing Initiative Program, we've been able to move um, hundreds of people off the street and into their own units, which is something that we haven't necessarily experienced in the years before. Kenny has been homeless for more than one year. Basically staying wherever I can. I try to stay at the shelter, but <laughs> most of the time it's finding a friend who has a place and then staying with them for a while and then coming back to the shelter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Try not to be a burden on everybody that's around me. He just recently learned he will be moving into housing through the county's Housing Initiative Partnership. He told us having a place to call home will give him peace of mind. It's a good feeling knowing I'm going to have a place of my own. Um, patience is, like I said, patience is everything. Um, I know I'm getting ready to be housed. The best thing about that is I'll have a place to go when I'm tired or I'm, I'm hungry. I, you know, granted, I've been homeless for a year, so I'm used to being outside. <laughs> I've slept outside for months. so. Being in a, in a house, it just, I mean, it's, it's a comfort. And the great thing is, is that we've housed so many people, and so it's really very satisfying when you see someone who was hopeless and homeless uh, move into his or her own apartment and be stable uh, and get their lives back in order. It's going to have to take ongoing support. It's going to take ongoing collaboration, not only from the local government and from DHS and from HUD and from nonprofit partners, but from the larger community as a whole. It has to be something that Montgomery County cares about and that they take as a priority, and I think that that's something that's really valued in this community is that it's a true collaboration collaboration from both the citizens and the neighbors all the way up to the top government. We did our point in time count last week here in Montgomery County, late Wednesday night and early Thursday morning, and, and I was assigned here to this area of Silver Spring. Councilmember Leventhal recently held a forum in downtown Silver Spring to talk about the strides the county has made in housing its homeless. We found a lot of people living in their cars. Um, that, was a, that was a picture of homelessness there. If you can help people and design a system where housing placement occurs, that's top priority for that person when it comes to respecting them. We should not be allowing these people to, to live on the streets. They heard from residents and those who are homeless. I've been homeless for 10 years. Who said the county still has work to do. If you see us in the street, if you see us in the church, and you see us and you know we have issues health-wise, why not say, okay, what can we do to help you? And so what I want to ask you to do is work with the service providers who are here to help you. Okay, we want to help. We're not here to deprive anybody of services. The service provider is are here to provide services and get everybody into housing. Montgomery County uses a public-private partnership mm -hmm. model in addressing homelessness. The county is focused on making homelessness as brief and non-recurring as possible. And after a night on the streets, Councilmember Leventhal told us he will continue to work towards that goal. You wonder sometimes uh, when you see people sleeping on the street, why don't they utilize shelter? And they have reasons why they don't want to utilize shelter. And um, that's up to them. You, they can't be compelled to go inside. That's, that's a big challenge. So um, it's, it's painful to see people suffering like this out in the cold and to understand that they, they don't have resources. And it makes me want to work harder to try to get all of them housed. That's been my commitment uh, throughout my time on the county council. Despite the rising housing costs and the lingering effects of the recession, Montgomery County is making progress towards its goal to end homelessness here. Housing for everyone makes a stronger Montgomery County. For County Cable Montgomery, I'm Susan Kennedy. Thanks for watching. I've slept outside for months. So 
being in a, in a house, it just, I mean, it's, it's a comfort. <laughs>